Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video I want to demonstrate a kind of an issue that comes up sometimes when I talk about multi-body modeling and the ability to create multiple components in an assembly. So uh, this is a tank model I used in my last video on how to use the symmetry constraint. And in this scenario, I have a tank, I've got a multi-body part model that I'm using as a top-down design driver to control the sizing of the final assembly, the configuration of components. Well, design change came through, and now we want to add couplers along the top of the tank. So more than just the one closest to the end, we want to add them along the length. So I've created a couple of extra parameters, the coupler count and the coupler spacing. So I'm going to utilize these to help control the position of those couplers. But the question is, where do I add them? So in the main tank body, uh, this part here, if I add them, they'll show up, there'll be multiple solids. I don't really like that. So I definitely want to add it in the assembly so that I get a part count of three for my couplers. But one thing I haven't done yet is in this main tank body, I haven't added the hole for the coupler. So here's the question. Do I add the cuts to this, the multi-body part, or should I add them to the tank body? Well, if I add them to the multi-body part, in Inventor, later on in the assembly, I can't use that those extra features to do like an automatic uh, constraining patterning type scenario. So I'm actually going to recommend that when you have to create a pattern of components or you want to match up different machining and drilling operations, you actually want to do that in the part itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the sketch by editing the derived part. I'm going to grab my coupler design sketch because that is going to contain the hole size I want. I'm also going to grab a couple parameters. We're going to grab the coupler count and the coupler spacing. And what we're doing is we're still going to use the top end level design part to control the overall design. And we're going to utilize those linked parameters via the derive into this part to control the holes. So now that I've got that information set up, you can see I've got a sketch. <clears throat> and then I can simply extrude this. Now I know we could talk about if this is a sheet metal part, we could flatten it first, then do all that stuff. I'm not going to worry about that. We're just keeping it nice and simple today. We're going to do a cut and we're going to go to that surface. So I'm just going to put this bore in there. I hit OK. And there we have the cut. So if I wanted to pattern this, now I could grab that feature. I can now go along the direction, let's say the Y axis, because you can see here the Y axis is the length. I have to flip it. And then I can grab those parameters here so I can find coupler count. And for the spacing, I can also find that parameter for coupler spacing. So this way, I'm going to add those cuts into my part via the derive. So when we come to the tank, assembly model now you see we've got our cuts and now because we have those cuts in the part we can use this really kind of powerful pattern called a, an associative pattern where we're going to grab this we're going to choose which pattern we want and we want this one so now I can take those couplers and we can create a nice automated pattern so there's meeting the customer requirement, but maybe we have additional mixing or something that needs to happen. So we come back here, we end up needing uh, a fourth coupler maybe. Maybe the spacing needs to change slightly. And so we make these changes, we go to the assembly model, it will update, and because we're using an associative pattern, those components will change count, they'll change position automatically. So this is the advantage to doing all of your feature creation in the part itself versus having to do it here in the multi-body top-down part model. 
So hopefully that's clear. There's a lot of power in the capability or in the process, but you just want to make sure you're putting the operations in the right spot. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.